Good morning, heart and soul. Thank you for joining us from home or wherever you are in the world. We are so very grateful that you are taking the time to be with us this Sunday morning. And thank you. I just want to acknowledge the few folks in service that are in the room because we have, we've closed our sanctuary because of health concerns and and being um, in accordance and alignment with the guidance from the CDC. Um, and yet, we still need to have some folks who are vaccinated or fully masked or whatever it is that we are doing in order to be safe, spread out few people in a room. And so I'm just grateful that Hasaneva that unfolds, that we're together on this adventure in faith. And that in our own way, we are consciously and intentionally moving forward together, doing our own thing, and yet in alignment with principle. That's how we are moving forward together. So today, and thank you, practitioner Ron Marshall, for the prayer. Because there really is a certain way that, that we pray. And so as we are moving forward together, we want to acknowledge that heart and soul literally has a prayer core, a professional prayer core a group of folks who are trained specifically around prayer and prayer leadership. And so today, my intention is that you get a sense of that we are moving forward together in prayer and in acknowledgement that this truly is the way that we pray. So look, Ernest Holmes said this. He said that a practitioner of spiritual mind healing is continually confronted with the fog of fear, superstition, and doubt. Otherwise, there'd be no occasion for this practice. So I'm going to lift up and honor our, pra our professional practitioner core, but I want you to know that I'm counting on you to be a practitioner as well. And practitioner, the root word, is practice. So what that means is regardless of, of your path or whether you are choosing to take the required courses and pass the exams, etc., required to be a professional practitioner, a licensed professional practitioner, I'm still calling you out into practice. And as you practice, what are you? You are a practitioner. You are the one who is practicing. So this is what Ernest Holmes is talking about, the professional practitioner, but I'm, I'm calling you out so that you will hear it as applying to you in some ways. So he says that if life weren't unfolding as an adventure in faith, there'd be no occasion for the practice. But it does. He says the practitioner will either get lost in the fog or the practitioner will see through the fog. Somebody understands. You see, because though the fog is there, he says, the sun is always shining. And that's what the practitioner clings to. Shown up this fog, but the practitioner is not clinging to the fog and all that can happen because of the fog and being a victim of the fog the practitioner is seeing the sun and working with that. The practitioner declares that the sun is shining and that the fog is dissipated. This is the practitioner's act of faith. It's the practitioner's compliance with the law and with the practitioner's own consciousness. Because this is so, the spiritual mind practitioner must spend time alone in quiet meditation. I'm calling you out. If you're not doing that, you're not practicing the presence. 
and spend time in quiet meditation until spirit, the all in all source, the living one, the strong one, becomes as real to you in practice as in form. Spiritual mind practice does not call for great concentration, but for deep realization and conviction. You're going to have to know something. And you're going to have to know that you know that you know. Because on an adventure in faith, it's going to get foggy, and we're going to doubt that we know, or that it can even be known. But in practice, we'll remember will recall that I know better than this. I know better than this. Sure, I stumbled and I fell, but I know better than to stay down here. So today, we celebrate. The way that we pray, we celebrate those who have agreed to be our prayer core. We celebrate our professional practitioner core. And let me invite you to just see who these folks are. They're beautiful folks in their own right. But I want you to take a gander at them with the intention of gazing upon the individuals who are committed to you as a part of heart and soul through prayer. Knowing the truth about who and how you are. Although your call to them would be the equivalent of saying, I'm in the fog, their work is to see you in the sunshine. Ah, oh, this is good stuff. Here's what I want you to know about them. I want you to know that in a sanctuary of active compassion, deep listening, unconditional love, a Centers for Spiritual Living licensed practitioner demonstrates that which is always present. Hear me now. They're not conjuring up something that isn't. They're not making the sunshine. They are willing to know that it is shining and have that be what they are aware of and sitting in and knowing. They're willing to demonstrate the one law of love, the universal God mind activated by our every thought, word, and choice. They know that there is actually a spiritual solution to every condition. I hope you heard me. A spiritual solution to every situation, not some. Yours is not an exception. No offense. I know it's tough. I know this is the adventure in faith that you never wanted to be on. I've been on some myself. But there's something about knowing that even in the midst of that experience, as awful as we have deemed it, that the presence and power of the divine is likewise present there. Through the constructive use of mind, of mind, health, peace, abundance, joy, and love expresses freely. And the practitioner is the one who knows this. That's their job. Their job is to know it. They are fully trained, committed, and dedicated to being in service to our community. Call on them. They're on our website. In fact, what I'm sharing with you right now is literally on our website about our professional practitioners, our spiritual prayer counselors, coaches. Call it what you will. And you will based on whatever your experience is of them. But they are our licensed spiritual practitioners. And they are available for prayer and by appointment for paid practitioner sessions. So there's prayer, and then there's also the opportunity for a full session with the practitioner, where they go more deeply into whatever 
it, it, whatever the fog. <laughs> Not more about the fog, but more about the sunshine that dissipates the fog. Oh, I hope that is helpful. Because right now, I want to present to you, as we move forward together, our practitioner core leadership. So it's Ron Marshall, practitioner Ron Marshall, practitioner Felicia Williams-Cosey, and practitioner Brenda Chanel. Good morning and welcome. My name is Ron Marshall. I am a founding member at Heart and Soul Center of Light, and I am in my 13th year as a licensed practitioner. I'm honored to be a member of the Heart and Soul Practitioner Corps, which supports our Heart and Soul community, and to serve as a co-lead of our Heart and Soul Practitioner Corps. I am my co-leads, Dr. Felicia Williams-Cosey and practitioner Brenda Grayson Chanel are here today to let you know about our Heart and Soul Practitioner Corps and how we support our Heart and Soul community. And just so you know, a Heart and Soul Practitioner is a person of high moral consciousness and deep understanding who's been trained in the study of science of mind and principles and in the art and science and skill of affirmative prayer. And so at this time, I'm going to uh, ask that my co-leads introduce themselves. Thanks so much, Ron. My name is Felicia Williams Cozy, and I have been a proud member of Heart and Soul Center of Light for 10 years and a licensed practitioner for 17 years. And I'm Brenda Grayson Chenault, a member of Heart and Soul Center for seven years and a religious science practitioner for 22 years. Our team of 12 licensed practitioners are committed to active, loyal, and supporting service to heart and soul, including sharing our time, talent, and treasure. We aim to be good stewards of our center through daily prayer, sacred service, consistent tithing, and enthusiastic fellowship with our members and friends. Practitioners at Heart and Soul loyally cooperate with and support our senior minister. And this is important for the growth, unfoldment, and success of our spiritual community. We agree to walk our talk, for we understand that our behavior and actions influence the success and well-being of the member community as a whole. In fact, one of our agreements is to do what I can, when I can, as often as I can with what I have on all levels. Dr. Felicia, can you share how practitioners help our community get prayed up at heart and soul? Thanks so much, Brenda. I love that term, prayed up. And you may have heard us say many times that practitioners pray without ceasing. Prayer is really at the core of who we are and what we do, both at heart and soul and out in the world. We offer laser prayer after Sunday service and on Wednesday mornings, which is a really quick opportunity to get affirmative prayer through what we call spiritual mind treatment to support you in whatever might be going on in your life, in the areas of health and well-being, abundance, relationship, career, and anything else that might be going on for you. And in addition to that, we offer uh, ways to know the truth with you. One of the things I love about being a practitioner is when people come to me and ask for prayer, it's an opportunity for me to get really present with the principles that I believe in. And every time I'm given the blessing of praying for another, I'm also praying for myself. So there's a reciprocity in prayer that I believe is the engine of why prayer works. And so I've talked a little bit about how it works within our church community that Brenda, maybe you might wanna add something uh, from a chaplaincy perspective of 
what practitioners do? Sure. Well, as chaplaincy volunteers, two of our practitioners provide pastoral care at a local trauma center hospital. They are bringing heart and soul, love and consciousness to patients of all faiths and work closely with ICU staff with end of life patients to identify and comfort patients experiencing spiritual stress, distress. And this is only one way, one of the outreach ways that Heart and Soul, it goes out of its doors into the community. Ron, I have a question for you. Our center's vision defines Heart and Soul as a world-class education and empowerment ministry. Tell us how practitioners actively engage with this vision. Well, certainly, Brenda. Our practitioners uh, support our adult education circle as facilitators and teaching assistants for certificated Centers for Spiritual Living classes, and also for Heart and Soul sponsored classes and workshops. The classes are an opportunity to learn about spiritual principles and how to apply them uh, effectively in one's life. Uh, there are also an opportunity to nurture your inner self uh, so that you can live an inspired, healthy, and happy life. Uh, as a facilitator of classes, I know I get great satisfaction uh, in seeing the results that students have uh, as they apply this teaching in their lives. Uh, very, very, very rewarding for me uh, in, uh, in that aspect. So Felicia, uh, as someone who also facilitates classes, do you have anything to add? Well, one of the things I know that shows up for me whenever I take a class, it takes me deeper into, I won't even say what I already know, but the next thing that I need to know. And whether I'm facilitating and preparing the class and delivering it to someone else or as a participant, because as practitioners, we also pr participate in the courses at Heart and Soul. I get so much benefit and I keep going deeper. I can take a book that I've read many times before and the next time I read it, there's something new that shows up for me that applies to my life in the moment. But sometimes just reading a book or going to the class isn't quite enough. Every now and then there's a a principle or something that I really want to be able to apply, but I can't quite grasp. And that's a time where turning to another practitioner or maybe for a practitioner session can be helpful. Ron, would you like to speak a little bit more to practitioner sessions? Sure, Felicia. So uh, individual practitioner sessions are an opportunity to remember and align with spiritual principles and practices in every area of your life. Uh, sessions are available by appointment on a fee basis with one of our licensed practitioners. The relationship between the practitioner and you as a client is one of utmost confidence, integrity, and trust, and all information shared is kept in strictest confidence. Typically, a uh, session begins with a practitioner welcoming you and offering prayer in support of the session. Uh, then what occurs is what I call a divine dialogue. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to safely discuss whatever it is that's on your heart. The practitioner listens attentively and responds without judgment, uh, holds you in the highest consciousness, and works with you to see what spiritual principles can be applied so that you can have the type of results that you want that you want in your life. Excuse me. <clears throat> they might also suggest that you uh, use certain spiritual tools to support you on whatever transformation that you're seeking. Uh, the session closes with a spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer uh, in order to set the desired healing in motion. Thanks, Ron. I, I understand a lot of the ways that the session happens, but I'm wondering as a participant or a, a client, what might I expect to get from a practitioner session? So I guess one of the things or some things that would have one actually decide to see a practitioner is one, if you're in, in need of inspiration, uh, you're celebrating a major event in your life, uh, and or you might be looking for healing 
uh, in, uh, in an area such as uh, finance, relationships, uh, health, or career. Uh, and the session itself offers you the opportunity to heal at every level, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, you have the opportunity to manifest greater success and well-being in every area of your life. Uh, and one of the gems in there is that you actually uncover hidden beliefs uh, and have the opportunity to replace those with powerful and new spiritual understanding uh, to support uh, you, how you want your life to be. Uh, and you also can determine spiritual practices uh, best suited for your needs uh, at the time. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, practitioners are not immune to the challenges of life. Mm -hmm. So we engage other practitioners at, you know, to support us. Uh, Brenda, can you speak to your experience uh, of working with a practitioner? Sure. Um, even as practitioners, sometimes we forget what we know. I had the experience recently of uh, attending a celebration of life service for a close relative of mine, very close relative who had departed. And uh, I forgot I needed someone to bring me back to principal on one particular day before the service. I was the wreck and I had to sit down. I picked up the phone and I called my practitioner. And often I would meet with my practitioner on Zoom or we would walk and talk and have a practitioner session or sometimes in person. And uh, I, I told my practitioner, I need to be reminded of a truth that I already know helped me through this. And by bringing me back to principle, uh, my practitioner, in, you know, reminded me of a truth that I already knew. And I was able to move through that service and that whole experience with more ease and with more grace. Um, and I was very grateful for what you might, you call the divine dialogue that day. And also, uh, call it being able to call up on my practitioners to support me at the service in prayer, uh, in silent prayer by be, just being there made a great difference. So it did help me greatly with peace and also accepting what was going on. Now, Felicia, would you tell us more about the other roles of practitioners at Heart and Soul? Yes, thank you, Brenda. So hopefully you've been able to see there are lots of ways that we serve uh, as practitioners within Heart and Soul Center of Light and as well as in our world. And in addition to that, you probably know that visioning is one of the key practices for Centers for Spiritual Living. And practitioners are available to support visioning, whether you want to do it on an individual one-on-one -on -one basis or as a group. And we also support all of the different circles within our church with visioning. We also support uh, our book review. Uh, we have a, at least once a month time that we meet and we go through our daily reader together. Uh, we serve as pulpit assistants. You may have noticed practitioners giving you the announcements, supporting the devotional portion of the service, or helping at giving time. And uh, we're also available to support all of the other circles within our church. And our circles are what we call our teams, our teams like IT, our welcome team, our music ministry. And you'll find that most of the time there's either a leader who's a practitioner or a practitioner who serves in that team as that presence that we bring. And so... Hopefully this has been a wonderful time for you to get a little bit of information about who we are as practitioners. One of the ways to recognize us at a service, you'll see us wearing these stoles. And also online, you can go to our, our website. And if you click on prayer, then there's an area that says spiritual coaching. And there you'll find the list and the contact information for all of our current practitioners. Thank you so much. And Ron, Brenda, it's just a delight to be in partnership and leadership with you. Thank you. Ditto. Likewise. Thank you, everyone. Much love.
Thank you, Takia. Thank you, Valerie Joy. A prayer of love is healing. And that's our work. That's our work. None of us is alone on our adventure in faith. 
let this be a reminder that each of us has access to prayer, a prayer of love, healing, revealing, transforming. I am so grateful to be a part of this community. And here's the thing, that all of us can, well, all of us probably have already had and recognize the benefit of prayer. And even if you can't recall the last time that was true for you, you can do it now. Do we have the slide with the names? All right. So with our, um, we have an honorary heart and soul practitioner. And um, during our 10th anniversary, Dr. Tracy Brown, who is a religious science practitioner of note, was with us. And uh, while she was here in town for our anniversary celebration and supporting us in that, she actually had a retreat with our practitioner corps. And they had such a good time, we ended up just folding her into the core. So Dr. Tracy Brown is with us this morning, with, is bringing our message for us this morning. And what I want you to know about her is that she's an old time religious scientist in the sense that she has been studying new thought spirituality for over 35 years. She's the author of a dozen books including Stained Glass Spirit, Becoming a Spiritual Community Where Oneness Does Not Require Sameness. For three years, she served as the chair of the governing, bo governing board for Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide. That's our leadership council. And we're so grateful for her leadership. She is the only practitioner to have been awarded the Ernest Holmes Award by Centers for Spiritual Living. And even outside of Centers for Spiritual Living, Dr. Tracy is a nationally recognized expert on diversity and inclusion. And anyone who knows her really well will tell you that she's a serious roller skater. Please join me in welcoming my sister in spirit, and an honorary heart and soul practitioner, Dr. Tracy Brown. Good morning, everyone. Let's put a little focus this morning on sacred service. Sacred, of course, means dedicated to a single, usually a spiritual purpose. Sacred means that we think something is worthy of respect. Sacred is a word that we use to describe something that we've made or declared holy. And we often think of things that are sacred as untouchable or silent or so very special. They should be put on a pedestal or kept protected in some way. Sacred service. Now, with service, let's compare that, right? So our common perceptions about service is that, one, service is active. It requires some action. Service is something that we usually do for others. Now, we expect service, right? So we demand attentive customer service. And we expect high quality service when we go to certain stores, maybe a Nordstrom's or, you know, a, a specialty store or boutique. And we take items that we own to service people for maintenance or for repair, or we bring service people into our homes to fix things that need to be fixed. So we hold the action of service in high regard and we really de define it as something that is interactive. It's something we do, it's not far off. We want it right here, right now. 
So our brains don't always put sacred and service together in a healthy way. When we think of sacred as the untouchable, the that very special, holy something and service as, no, I need my service right now. You better give me some good service. Sacred is often viewed as special and silent and elite. Maybe, maybe, maybe untouchable. Service is very accessible and requires action. So think for a minute about your favorite practitioner. Consider the ways your practitioners are in service to you. And I'm hoping as you bring different practitioners to mind, you realize that their service to you is making the sacred real. Practitioners use spiritual principle to guide their own lives and to help you navigate your life. Practitioners are actively serving while at the same time studying and modeling a sacred way of living. Licensed practitioners in Centers for Spiritual Living, like many who have gone before us, are committed to sacred service. We study the sacred and we strive to make it tangible and accessible through acts of service. So let's talk a little bit more about sacred service and some examples of sacred service that might come to mind. Now, there are many leaders who we can hold up as examples of teaching and practicing spiritual principles, but probably because we're in mid-January, it's no surprise that the example set by Martin Luther King Jr. comes immediately to my mind. No, Martin Luther King Jr. was not a student of science of mind. He was a devoted student of Ahimsa or the principle of nonviolence. And no, Martin Luther King Jr. was not a licensed practitioner of religious science. He was a licensed and ordained minister in the traditions of the Baptist church. But it is in the example he set by the way he lived his life that reminds us of everything we teach about the sacred nature of service. Martin Luther King Jr. said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. So let's talk about that as we think about and assess our own capability for sacred service. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. What does it mean to have a heart full of grace? As I was reflecting on that and journaling and reading about, reading different things in the past week or so, I was thinking about this, a heart full of grace. Tracy, when do you show up and how do you show up demonstrating a heart full of grace? And as I was, preparing and reading and researching, I was reminded of something that Sarah Flowers wrote. Do you know who Sarah Flowers is? Sarah Flowers was an African-American religious science practitioner. She completed the professional studies in religious science, the Institute of Religious Science in the mid to late 1930s. And she was the author over the next 10 or 15 years of a half dozen books, including a book titled Common Sense, which is 
uh, all about applying our spiritual principles in everyday situations and the atomic principle of man, which was all about quantum physics before we even had the term quantum physics. She was a full-time practitioner who had a weekly radio show and she dedicated her life to living science of mind principles and teaching others how to do the same. Here's what sister practitioner Sarah Flowers said that reminds me what it means to have a heart full of grace. She wrote, feel so full of love for mankind that you can treat them for understanding and send them thoughts of love. Call upon God to aid and strengthen you and you will feel your being surrounded by the center of power. Repeating, feel so full of love for mankind that you can treat mankind for understanding and send humanity thoughts of love. Call upon God to aid and strengthen you and you will feel the being, you will feel your being surrounded by the center of power. I think that's what it means or that's a way to describe what it means to have a heart full of grace. And Martin Luther King Jr. also said in his quote about service, how would we be, he also referred to having a soul generated by love, which makes me think, how would I behave? How would we behave if we remember we are, each one of us, a soul generated by love? Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist wrote, I cannot allow myself to be insensitive to the wrongs and sufferings of any part of the great family of humanity. Wow, is it not sacred work to see others as a part of your own family? This is what practitioners do. We strive to see every person as another face of God. And we commit to help you do the same. Ernest Holmes was very clear. And in some instructions to a graduating class of practitioners, he said, the work of a practitioner is to teach and practice, to practice and teach. There's nothing more sacred than being in the service to humanity by practicing these spiritual principles we know as science of mind and teaching them to others. Martin Luther King Jr. said, everyone can be in the service of serving others, helping others and making the world better. And I will add, that everyone, every person can live a life guided by spiritual principle and sacred intention. This morning, we just put a little spotlight on a group of people who have formally vowed to be in this sacred service, following the traditions of thousands before them to teach and practice science of mind, to practice and teach a spiritually guided way of being. My name is Tracy Brown, and I am proud to be a licensed practitioner for Centers for Spiritual Living.
shame of not choosing higher and all the disappointing moments fade into God and no mistakes have been made in God all the ways that we choice prisoner of anguish in a jail love I'm so lonely a jail of all is lost but the stars shining to remind us seed will need the darkness to change into new life and no mistakes have been made in God. All the ways that we seem to fail in God, all oh, faith. It all fades into God. Oh, yeah. to remember inside my pain is the seed of my strength in God is the gravity that holds me together in God is the open in which I am spinning I see the stars and I remember to remember Inside my pain is the seed of my strength. God is my life. In God is such excellence. All oh, the ways that we seem to fail in God. fades into God. Here's the thing, y'all. Sometimes we don't remember that when we need to know it. This is why having a practitioner programmed into one's smartphone, now that's a smartphone. <laughs> that's a smartphone that has a practitioner programmed in it. That's a for real smartphone. Look, I just have to say thank you to Kia. Thank you so much for, for blessing us with that from her heart. 
the way that that those lyrics just flowed off of her vo voice, out of her voice, her vocal cords. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Valerie Joy. Thank you, Dr. Tracy Brown. Thank you for bringing that. And a special thanks to our heart and soul practitioners. My apologies that earlier when I, when I brought them to you, they, but you're going to see them in just a minute. A special thanks also to, you know, to Tracy's point, sacred service is the village that shows up to do whatever is required that we can be, heart and soul can be, who we intend to be and evolve on our adventure in faith. So just thank you, all of the circles who are supporting us in that, and a special shout out to our heart and soul practitioners and their leadership circle. <laughs> so I want to leave this slide here for a moment because this one has their names on it, and I want you to know who they are so that when you go to the website, you can you know exactly what you're working with. Yes, because I know there are a number of you who have never met with us in the building, that somehow you found us or we were recommended, and I want you to know who is in service and how you can. Now, if you go to our website, you'll be able to contact them directly. Also, can I just say a special shout out to our, our health and well-being ministry? Oh for that circle because they are still bringing us gratitude in motion. I thought it was over at the end of December. First of all, it was intended to just be for our anniversary month, and then it got so good to us, and they, but they've been hosting it. They've been curating it and hosting, and it is magnificent. A special shout out to Pam Grimm, who continues to show up on Thursday mornings at a at 11.30 a.m. and on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. And then the rest of the time, Monday through Friday, typically at 7, but on Wednesday at 7.30. Why? Because we get in prayer at 7 a.m. on Wednesday. But we are looking at Paul Eugene videos and just having a good time in gratitude for being in motion. If you've ever had a situation like I have with my shoulders where there, there were those times when I could not be in motion. Lord knows I am grateful to be able to be in motion right now. Get your motion on with us. Imagining justice, who just continues to remind us that no matter where we are in, on our adventure in faith, no matter where we are on the path, that there is something that we can do to expand our consciousness and reinforce our intention to live our best lives, not just individually, but on behalf of the collective as well. And so on this Wednesday, there's sacred conversations, trusting the vision, and who? It's the heart and soul health and well-being circle that is hosting, that is facilitating, rather, the process. So grateful for this. And then there is not a, um, uh, an IJ session, an Imagining Justice session that next Wednesday, and they'll be back as usual on February 2nd. Prayer and care. Did I say prayer? Did I say anything about pray today? Well, our prayer and care village wants to remind you that prayer works, and I'm here to remind you of the many ways that you can be involved in prayer. There's group prayer rooms that begin about 10 minutes after our service stops. So you can join via Zoom or by phone. The information is on your screen. There's a 24-7 uh, prayer request line as well. That number is 510-607-7747. You can just leave a message for a prayer facilitator to return your call to be in prayer with you. You can also email your prayer request to prayerandcare at heartsoulcenter.org. Whatever you take away, I hope you realize now that there is, we have something for everyone. There's a way for each and every person who wants prayer to either celebrate, to lock in this good. Can I just take a moment and remind us that sometimes good stuff happens and we, we fight it. 
We can't, we don't allow it to really permeate our life experience because we don't, we feel whatever we feel. And so that never gets to really set up in us. So when something good happens, call a practitioner so that you can get that locked in, in your worthiness code. And then when things aren't working, call a practitioner. So you can, when you're in the fog, so you can lock in the sun. So it, I'm saying all the time, get thee to a practitioner. It works. And look, on our adventure in faith, being in community, one of the ways that we are in community, even though we're not meeting in person in that way, is that we're reading the same book together. I don't know if you get it, but in my consciousness, when I know that I'm reading the same thing that a bunch of other folks are reading in our community, that does something for me. That keeps me in there. We also are in community with our gratitude in motion. Are you getting the pattern here? There are ways for us to still be together. Our prayer and care village is offering us ways to pray together. You can get with us on social media, on all of the ways. You know how to stay connected. The key is that we are moving forward together in divine principle. Oh, Lord, this is good stuff. It all fades into God. Get somebody to help you know that, remember it, be and live in that. Here is Dr. Tracy Brown to take us out in prayer. This is the way we pray. I invite you to go within with me. Join me in prayer. Inspired by the words of Sarah Flowers, let us feel so full of love for mankind that we can treat all of humanity for understanding and send all of humanity thoughts of love. In this moment, I ground myself in the love that is God, the infinite nature of love that is the source of all life. My life and the life of everyone within the sound of my voice. What I know is absolutely true is that this is the expansive love that is so particularized that it is at the center of all life. And it is so vast that it is the circumference of all that ever is. It is this love that is the motivation for being in service. And it is this love, this principle of love that is absolutely the definer of all that is sacred. And so this week going forward, I claim and declare that it is a week of service. It is a week of recognizing the opportunity to be a sacred being in a world where there is sometimes chaos and confusion and to constantly return to the innermost God, which is the same as the highest most God and provides everything that is needed to be guided into the perfect service for each one to give, to gift into the world. I'm so grateful to know that sacred service is modeled by licensed practitioners, but it is not the only that is not the only group that can be in sacred service. So in celebration of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, I know that millions of people commit to being sacred and to being service in the world. And I commit to let that intention begin with me. From that place of gratitude, 
for the opportunity, the willingness, the readiness, and the commitment to be in service. And to do that in a way that reflects the sacred, I simply release this into the flow of spiritual law and perfection. I let it be. I claim it as done. Ashe. 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 And so it is.